My dear friends, a hearty welcome to you to begin the Holy Week, the Passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do not have the solemn procession, but we shall begin with the Holy Eucharist. We ask our dear Lord to bless the world with peace. During this time of Lent, Ukraine and Russia have given into war. Many other countries are in trauma and struggling. Even Sri Lanka is experiencing difficult times. Amidst pandemic, many families are suffering. We offer all these intentions at the altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Passion, the Paschal Mystery. That is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection, for it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in His footsteps, so that being made by His grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in His resurrection and in His life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-loving God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 7. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Your response My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. Your response? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Your response? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O help me, hasten to aid me. Your response? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. Your response? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 11. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to be glory to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. The elders of the people and the chief priests and scribes rose, and they brought Jesus before Pilate. They began their accusation by saying, We found this man inciting our people to revolt, opposing payment of the tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ as a king. Pilate put to him this question, Are you the king of Jews? He replied, It is you who say it. Pilate then said to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no case against this man. But they persisted. He is inflaming the people with his teaching over all Judea. It has come all the way from Galilee, where he started down to here. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man were a Galilean, and finding that he came under Herod's jurisdiction, he passed him over to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was delighted to see Jesus. He had heard about him and had been wanting for a long time to see him. Moreover, he was hoping to see some miracle worked by him. So he questioned him at some length, 
but without getting any reply. Meanwhile, the chief priest and the scribes were there, violently pressing their accusations. Then Herod, together with his guards, treated him with a contempt and made fun of him. He put a rich cloak on him and sent him back to the pilot. And though Herod and Pilate had been enemies before, they were reconciled that same day. Pilate then summoned the chief priest and the leading men and the people. He said, You brought this man before me as a political agitator. Now I have gone into the matter myself in your presence and found no case against the man in respect of all the charges you bring against him. Nor has Herod either, since he has sent him back to us. As you can see, the man has done nothing that deserves death. So, I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But as one man, they howled, Away, Away with, with him, him. Give, give us Barabbas. Barabbas. This man had been thrown into prison for causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate was anxious to set Jesus free and address them again, but they shouted back, Crucify him, crucify him. And for the third time he spoke to them, Why, what harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death, so I shall have him punished and then let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified. And their shouts were growing louder. Pilate then gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been imprisoned for rioting and murder, and handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they pleased. As they were leading him away, they seized on a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, Happy are those who are barren, the wombs that have never borne, the breasts that have never suckled. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, to the hills, cover us. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? Now with him, they were also leading out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there and the true criminals also, one on the right and the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching him. As for the leaders, they jeered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too. And when they approached to offer vinegar, they said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us as well. But the others spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence as he did, but in our case, we deserve it. We are paying for what we did, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, 
Indeed, I promise you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw that what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breast. All his friends stood at a distance. So also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee. And they saw all this happen. Dear brothers and sisters, Deep within myself, there is a fear. There is tension, anxiety and worries that our Lord is suffering. Let us put our own selves into the place of Jesus himself that we stand by truth, that we do every good deed and are now placed for execution. First, we appreciate the one who is good. We speak all good about the person. But when we have to be truthful, we stand against the truth and the person who is truthful. This is the experience of Jesus himself. He became man. He took, up, took on the flesh by humbling himself. Just as St. Paul speaks in the reading in his letter to Philippians. He humbled himself he took up the flesh and became obedient to God even unto the cross. And listen to what Isaiah says when they are in exile. When I reached out to people, enemies came on my way. But I did not give up. When they striked me, I showed them my back that they can still go on. When they tore my beard, I showed them my face so that they can go on. And at that time, I experienced the love of God the presence of God. And all these suffering struggles and even spittle and slap strikes did not pain me because the Lord did not allow it all to touch me. My dear brothers and sisters, if we are people of faith, if we truly believe in God, that he is the one who possesses me. But above all, I need to be truthful. I need to be strong in being truthful. Look at the life of Jesus being handed over to Pilate and then to people and then to Herod. Everyone playing their game when it comes to truth. 
everyone hiding. Even the religious leaders do not have the aspect of spirituality in them. They are arrogant. They do not have love. They do not have feeling. Only their mouth speaks of love, speaks of God, but their actions are all of hatred, all of merciless killing. Jesus becomes a victim of a corrupt system. When a person is executed wrongly without being trialed or tried, it is a wrong system to kill the innocent, to destroy the innocent. My dear brothers and sisters, you and me who believe in Jesus, if we truly stand for faith, stand for justice, stand as a voice for the voiceless, we will have to experience a similar thing, but not as Christ himself faced being dragged on the road, being taken to the cross and then nailed. The statements of today, Hosanna to the King of David, gives a triumphant feeling. He is our King, the King of the Jews. They spread a carpet and let Jesus go on with the palms in their hands saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Many a times our entries are of such type, with joy, happiness, but the end is very sad. But for us Christians, there is no end in this. The end is resurrection, taking part in the Paschal mystery of Christ. Resurrection is a great event. But what Jesus went through is a sad thing for us. We remain silent during this time for pondering upon the event of Christ. We do not remain silent over injustice towards the wrong that the people experience. But we remain silent to reflect, to introspect, and to make a change in me. If I do not change, what great things have I done by believing in Christ? So my dear friends, let us take up the change. Let us truly say Hosanna to the King of David, for he has granted us resurrection. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right, at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us present to our Lord our hearts, desires, and intentions. Praying for our church. Praying for Pope Francis, bishops, cardinals, priests, religious, and all the laity, that together we may transform the world, we may bless the world, and heal the world. We pray for all our political leaders. Praying for governments, that they may work towards the welfare of the people, towards the downtrodden and the poor. We pray for all those who are in need of the Lord's touch at this time, those who are waiting for healing, 
those who are waiting for jobs, those who are appearing for the exams. We pray for those who are struggling, those anxious, worried, those depressed. We pray for Russia and Ukraine that they may rethink about unity and love during the time of the Holy Week. It is a sad thing that the war will continue or still continues when the whole world is preparing to convert, to change, to transform. We ask our Lord to intervene. Lord bless Sri Lanka and other parts of the world where people are struggling and suffering. Bless us all, O Lord, we pray. Pray, my brothers, my sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it, by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks to our Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of our faith save us savior of the world for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope derrick our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with saint joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father In the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we all dare to say Our, Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will who we'll live and reign forever and ever Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other this loving sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold, He who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Crown him, crown him, Christ the Lord and King. Through all ages, let his praises ring. Glory, honor to his name we'll bring, now and forevermore. We will cry.
Dear friends, let us pray to Mary, our mother, for all the necessary graces, both material and spiritual. During this crisis, during the war, during the time when people are struggling, not getting enough to survive, we place all these people at the feet of our Lord, asking our dear mother to intercede for us. Praying for those who are sick, those who are suffering. Praying for Russia and Ukraine in a very special way. Praying for Sri Lanka and the people who are suffering due to fall of economy. Dear Lord, we pray to you through your mother for all our personal intentions, intentions of those who are looking for jobs, intentions of those who are appearing for the exams, for those who are preparing for the exams, the couples who need your blessings and a gift of a child. We pray for those in the hospitals, those to be operated, and those who are operated, those who are waiting for healing. Lord, touch them. Bless all the Christians during this time of the Holy Week that we may intensify our preparations to trust you more closely. Bless our families with peace, joy, and serenity, we pray. My dear friends, thank you for attending this service. We are going to have the Holy Week services and you will get the links in advance, the notifications. So kindly subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you get notified for the same. Do assist us by your alms giving so that we can help the poor, the needy. During this time of Lent, we are called and specially invited to do this great alms giving. We have also displayed the courses for tally, designing and videography. The first batches are full. Only the tally first batch is yet open. You are free to book your seats as early as possible. Let us pray. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him and crown him, Lord of all. Crown him. Oh,